The year was 1891. Spain ruled the islands through the iron fist of Governor General Valeriano Weyler. Ilustrados studying in Spain were in the midst of a second propaganda campaign. They published the newspaper La Solidaridad and wrote passionately about unity and self-determination. In Belgium, José Rizal published his second novel entitled El Filibusterismo. At home, a revolution was afoot and a nation was about to be born. On April 8, 1891, Spanish lawyers based in Manila and those mentioned in the Spanish Royal Decree of 1891 were summoned to a meeting at the Real Audencia in Intramuros. The purpose of the meeting, presided by Magistrado Eduardo de Ortuña, was the establishment of the Colegio de Abogados de Filipinas and the election of its first executive board. The Governor General appointed José Juan Icaza as decano of the Colegio. And in that summer of discontent, one of the oldest association of lawyers in Asia was established. The Colegio adopted its estatutos to govern the organization. It was granted juridical personality with powers to police its own ranks. A few years later, the Philippine Revolution broke out in 1896. Many members of the Colegio joined the fight for independence. Apolinario Mabini, a Colegio member, was regarded as the brains of the Philippine Revolution. Felipe Calderon, also a member of the Colegio, drafted a Malolos constitution. As the Spanish Empire fell and American rule was established, American lawyers crossed the Pacific to practice law in the Philippine Islands. At the turn of the century, they organized themselves into an association of lawyers with ties to the American Bar Association. On June 24, 1904, under the inspiration of Chief Justice Cayetano Arellano, the Colegio de Abogados de Filipinas and the Association of American Lawyers in the Philippines merged, giving birth to the Philippine Bar Association. American lawyer Thomas L. Hardigan was elected as its first president. Among the members of the PBA at that time were Felipe Calderon, Gregorio Araneta, Rafael Del Pan, and Juan Sumulo. In 1924, José Abad Santos was elected president of the PBA. He was later appointed Secretary of Justice and Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. In 1942, while serving as the nation's caretaker during the occupation, he was captured and executed for refusing to collaborate with the Japanese invaders. On February 24, 1945, as Manila was bombarded by American forces during the War of Liberation, the PBA building in Intramuros was turned into ruins. With our nation rising from the ashes of the horrible war, the PBA helped in the task of rebuilding our legal institutions. On August 1, 1946, the canons of judicial ethics were adopted upon the proposal of the PBA. The decade following our independence saw a fervent tide of nationalism sweeping our land. It was a time for a rebirth. On March 27, 1958, prominent Filipino lawyers incorporated the Philippine Bar Association as the direct successor of the Colegio de Abogados de Filipinas. In recognition of the importance of the rule of law in our national life, in 1959, President Carlos P. Garcia proclaimed September 19 of each year as Law Day throughout our country. To this day, the PBA commemorates Law Day each year as a reminder that we are a nation ruled by law and not by men. It also marks the annual transition in the association's leadership. In 1966, the PBA returned to Intramuros and built itself a new home. 
but the great earthquake that shook the capital in 1968 reduced the PBA building to rubble. Uh, I joined the Philippine Bar Association in 1968 at the prodding of my friends in uh, the law practice, including Ike Bello, Gonzalo Gonzalez, and Dick Romulo. I also thought that it would be nice to join an association and be associated with the legal luminaries of the time, including Abad Santos, Recto, Delgado, and Tadiana, whose name are now legendary. The 1970s saw a nation torn with strife and the rise of a ruthless dictator. The PBA was among those who condemned the imposition of martial law and the brutality that followed. In the dark years of the dictatorship, the PBA stood watch, investigated human rights violations, and against tremendous odds, won cases for those illegally detained. In 1983, the PBA joined the nation in mourning the assassination of Senator Ninoy Aquino. As our democratic institutions were gradually restored following the 1986 People Power Revolution, the PBA also undertook its own efforts at restoration. It found its new home in Makati City, the new financial capital of our country. In 1968, when the great earthquake destroyed our building in Intramuros, it became the leaning tower of Intramuros. And after a while, we filed cases against the contractor and the architect. And then this, the land was sold by our president then at the time, and the proceeds of which was used to buy our present office condominium. And in keeping with the times, the PBA elected its first lady president. My romance with the Philippine Bar Association started when Mr. Federico Ograba, as the husband of Justice Corazon Juliano Ograba, invited us to be a member of the, the organized Philippine Bar. Pasita de los Reyes Phillips, who has been the treasurer for all these years, uh, resigned as treasurer. and. The board appointed me as treasurer. I accept it because for me, it's a big honor to be treasurer of such a very uh, good organization. It took 19 years, or 17 or 18 years, when the courtly and the lovable members of the board decided that maybe they should, after all these years of service, to reward me with something. And that's when they elected me as president of the Philippine Bar. At that, the first woman president of the Philippine Bar. I recall my mother-in-law, who was acclaimed by the National Historical Commission as the first woman doctor of the Philippines. So right there to her, who is in heaven, I said, Mama, you were the first in the medical profession. I am the first in this distinguished organization. The history of the PBA is fundamentally intertwined with our nation's history. And as our history continues to be written, the PBA remains in constant watch, speaking truth to power and challenging the excesses of the rulers of the day both in the real world or in cyberspace. We are the PBA, heirs to a glorious past, kindred in noble purpose, to blaze the future's path. Through time we have stood constant, faithful to our oath, champions of the oppressed, guardians of the truth. We are the PBA. We stand for the rule of law.